Let's talk. We're on the uh, Protectors podcast slash show. It's it's gone beyond just an audio version. We're now on episode two hundred and thirty something. And finally, I have Kevin on the show. I've been wanting to have you on the show for a long time, brother. Um, and now we have something very in common that I love talking about, and that is veterans transition, veterans hiring, getting that fire, and working that working the problem, brother. Kevin, welcome to the show. Jason, good to be here. I know we've uh, gone back and forth over the last couple of months, so it's an honor to be here, and it's good to talk to you today. I'm honored to have you. Um, you've been on a lot of different shows. You've talked about your your last book. We have your current book coming up, but there is one organization that I love that you support, and that's Mama Lee, Debbie Lee. She's been on the show a couple of times, and I absolutely commend you for for helping her out and raising awareness about awareness about Mark Lee's mission. Yeah, you know I've. You know, the, the timing and how I met Debbie Lee is definitely very, very sad. Um, but, you know, like I tell people, you know, Mark passing wasn't his final gift. His final gift was, you know, sharing his family, his friends um, and that connectiveness. And uh, Mama Lee's taken America's Mighty Warriors, you know, to another level. I remember when she first started out and what she grew it to. And, you know, my, my day-to-day job as a physician assistant, um, we work in well, wellness and human performance medicine. So we, we've teamed up with AMW. Uh, with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So when these veterans are going through, we're working metabolically to correct the issues and get the body to a position where it wants to heal. And um, she's ensured that success with the HBA therapy. And we've seen very, very good results and seen veterans go from dark places to bright places. So it's it's rewarding, um, it's fulfilling, and I'm, I'm glad Debbie Lee is uh, getting the, uh, the word out there and making it happen. She is, man. I commend her so much too. She is tireless. Um, I'm, gl- I'm sure she gets tired, but she is just out there working it. And I love, I love what she's doing. I love that they're actually giving back. I have a touch and go with nonprofits. Uh, I like to see the ones that are actually doing the right things for the right people. So shout out to you, Mama Lee. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's talk about your transition. Um, you read the book. Uh, it was the work, you know, kind of putting in your own work, the workbook. And you were like, hey, look, uh, veterans are having a tough time transitioning because they can't kind of get to that next level. A lot of us have had times. Uh, I was an IRR guy when I got recalled. Um, you know, when I got out of the Army initially in the 90s, I kind of didn't have any clue what I was doing. I thought I'd go into the Border Patrol. College ended up rearing its head, and I said, oh, I'll go to college. I was kind of touch and go, but I didn't have a lot of – you know, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, same thing when I got back from IRR recall, I had to find a new job that was closer to home. I didn't have a network. I knew what I was doing because I've been in and out of the Fed for a long time. Let's talk about this transition. How was your transition in getting out? Yeah, I, I'll step back a little bit before I actually got out of the military. You know, I had a very fulfilling time in the teams. And I think that was the crucial step for success on the outside of the military. You know, I, I felt like I did everything I wanted to do in the SEAL teams. Um, I got to work with amazing human beings. We got to do a very, very important role in the global war on terror, especially in Iraq in 2006, 2008. Um, I love being at SEAL Team 3. So I was in a good position to transition. Don't get me wrong. They didn't come out with, uh, come with reservations. Um, as, <laughs> should I get out? You know, I really like what I'm doing. Um, so when I finally made that decision to leave and, you know, I met my now wife at the time, Lindsay, And I thought about what am I going to do next? What is probably the best thing for me to do? And I like medicine. That's what I planned to do before I joined the Navy. I was a corpsman in the teams. So being a PA and having met physicians assistants while I was in the Navy um, kind of set me down that pathway. But you can get out of the Navy or you can get out of the military and have a plan. But it's like getting from point A to point Z. What do you do in the meantime? So for me, I moved back to a, a position of comfort um, and stuff, something that I knew, which was back to Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut originally. And at that time, Connecticut was one of the few states that was giving full tuition to uh, veterans in state. Um, so I finished up at the University of Connecticut, but it wasn't easy because back then, you know, in 2010, um, the communication with like the veterans, um, you know, shop on, on campus and you know, me rolling this smart transcript in with like, you know, 175 credits or whatever. And it translated to four credit hours at the University of Connecticut kind of set me back. I was full steam ahead. I'm going to finish my undergrad. You know, I'd written my, um, 
my essay and applied to school while I was on deployment. Um, but when I got there, it kind of stopped and came to a grind. And I felt that I was going to be successful if I was going to be proactive. And I feel like that's step one as a veteran is you have to be proactive. You know, you're going to, you're going to run into a lot of closed doors. And if you don't knock on every door, you're not going to find out which ones will open and which ones won't. So um, it was a teamwork. I was working full-time at the time. My wife was working part-time and I was going to school full-time. So I was lobbying each individual department for credits that I felt I deserved based on military service. So I had to take the initiative and go to you know, the anatomy and physiology department and say, Hey, I went to, you know, 18 Delta, the Special Operations Combat Medic School, I think I deserve X amount of credit hours. So I was able to accumulate, I think, um, close to a year's worth of credit hours based on my service. But that took, you know, the place for, I had to lobby to each head of department chair and say, hey, this is a curriculum. And this is what I think I should be entitled to. Um, even I went to the military science department, uh, they had a marksmanship course. And I was like, hey, here's my, here are my sniper school diplomas. And here's a commendation medal with a uh, you know, it proved that I actually was able to uh, you know, do this job in a real life situation. And they're like, by the way, here's your one credit hour for, uh, for marksmanship. So um, it wasn't without trial and error and persistence. That was uh, for me, the way to get through undergrad. And um, I felt like one of the, you know, things with undergrad that helped me out quite a bit was it helped smooth the stone out. You know, I got out of the Navy, like super jagged, rough, you know, every other word was a cuss word. And don't get me wrong, going through undergrad as a political science major in Connecticut, the University of Connecticut. Oh, was my difficult. gosh. It was it was literally, you know, philosophical battle every day. Um, but I felt that that helped, you know, ease that transition process into the corporate side and the professional side, because um, you, know, you, can't, you can't come out raw and then jump into a, a you know, a coat and tie job and, you know, still talk like you are military um, to a certain degree you can. But I felt for me, that was an important first step I was getting through undergrad, you know, the social progression. Don't get me wrong. I'm so rough around the edges. I still hunt and all that stuff and cuss. But I felt like for me, getting out, going through undergrad helped me get to a position where graduate school would be easier and then eventually that transition to the- you, uh, you brought up some great points. I don't even think about because I'm, you know, I'm damn near 50 years old and uh, I did my undergrad in the 20s. But I was rough around, believe me, I was an artillery dude coming out and, you know, what are you kids doing, uh, you youngsters? And I'm like 26 years old or 20, no, 23 when I started. And I'm like, come on, rough around the edges, man. But the social progression and then lobbying for your credits. There's a lot of things you said in that little short stint you were talking right there could fill novels because a lot of people don't realize that their military career is a career. It's a bookmark whether that's you just made it through basic training on up to you had a full career. There is so much that you did within that time frame, so much within those bookends that, Hey, you know what? You could lobby for different credits in the undergrad, especially in the undergrad world. And when you're bringing up going to the military science department, electives, 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 leadership training, deployments, there is so much there. You, you really have to sell yourself, but you have to do it your transcripts from the military are going to show like one paragraph of one thing you've done that is way more than just one paragraph. Absolutely. I had a, um, you talk about leadership. I had a, an officer who's a good friend of mine. He said, you know, you have to spin it in such a way that guarding a soda machine in Baghdad looks like a presidential detail. And I laughed at that, but it's true. You know, when I'm looking to hire, I tend to look at people that have military backgrounds, because I know there's some aspect of leadership that was in their military service that they had to perform that their peers just don't have, you know, coming out of undergrad, you know, how these, yeah, I mean, you might be able to organize a, you know, a keg party and a beer pong party at your dorm. However, you know, if you're able to take a fire team and go ahead and hit an objective, I know what true leadership is. So you have to lobby for yourself and really show the character development. And for me, the biggest thing was I was a, you know, essentially a college failure. My first go around, my first GPA was a 0 0.7. So I had to really show people that in the span of, you know, eight years, I had changed and I'd been, I, you know, became a uh, person with a lot more wisdom. Um, so lobbying on behalf of yourself is a huge component to getting out of the military. You and I, uh, similar, similar. I was, before I went in the army, I was a 1.37 or somewhere around there, <laughs> failed at everything. Um, believe me. And then going into undergrad and they're looking at your transcripts and you're like, look, the man I was before is not the man I am now and showing them that, Hey, you know what? I could do this. 
Um, and you can, but the thing is self accountability. I like that. Um, I was reading a, a little bit about your book about how, you, you know, what the book, you kind of base it off the work had, there wasn't a lot about tough love in the military. You have to really taps when you go through transition assistance program towards the end of your career, at the end of your military, whether it's, like I said, that's basic training on up. It's just a small little, they're going to say, Hey, here's a resume. And, and your resume is going to have a sentence that says progressive responsible experience. Come on. You got to really dig in and say, Hey, you know what? When you say, I'm going to get out, start planning, pre-planning, start writing that resume, start continuously building that resume. A resume should be like an infantry fighting position. You're always fixing it. It's like everything. You're always fixing it. Uh, let's talk about that tough love. And let's talk about saying, Hey, you know what? Nobody's going to give you anything. You served. That's great. But now you have to earn it. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I feel like people in the military, you know, always rely on what we did, what we did um, transitioning out. You have to really spin it as to what I did. Um, and you have to be willing and able to be held accountable for your actions, both positive and negative. Um, but it goes down to, you know, like we say in the SEAL teams, plan your dive, dive your plan, you know, because you can, you can, you know, plan a dive. And once you get underwater, when it's dark, you know, plans can change if you don't stick to that plan. So you have to have that goal and where you want to go. Um, you know, going from a, a cumulative GPA of about 1.5 for my three semesters in college, and then saying, Hey, I want to go to Wake Forest and become a physician assistant. You know, you have to constantly lobby people and say, this is where I've changed. And I had to, you know, it's tough love. You know, I had to, I was driving 40 some odd miles to school. Um, I was spending all day uh, you know, in class and then I'd come home and we had a newborn son. So I'd spend a night, you know, feeding him, you know, playing with him while I'm studying, you know, organic chemistry. And, you know, it's easy to complain, woe is me, you know, this sucks. I, I don't want to do this. However, you know, you have to be hard. You have to be tough. You have to go ahead and push through because like, I, like for me going through school, especially graduate school was like academic SEAL training. You know, I had to be willing each day to show up, give it 110%. And then in the evenings do the same in order to guarantee success. That end of the tunnel was so, so far away, but each day was something new and I had to perform and you have to be tough. You have to be tough on yourself. You have to be resilient. Um, and you always have to have that plan in place to ensure success. You have to plan that dive, dive that plan. Tell me you put that in a book, Academic SEAL Training, because I love that saying right there. It's true. It, it really was. <laughs> um, I, always thing... say, I always say like, you know, with, with graduate school, uh, you know, they have quotas, right? I, I think they have one quota for like a knuckle dragger. And, you know, I fit that quota at Wake Forest. They're like, we're going to turn this knuckle dragger into an educated knuckle dragger and send them out to the workforce. Um, you've done a lot more than just knuckle drag, you know, because we, we always have different, when you get thrust into the military. And I tell people this all the time. I came from a small town in New Jersey, 94 people graduated my high school class. People think Jersey, they think city. I get sent to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and I'm thrust into a platoon of everybody and anybody you could possibly imagine. You're learning cultural geography, your whole military career. Put that on a resume, people, cultural geography. That's the wave of the future. And as a SEAL, you're not only doing it here, you're doing it abroad. And I commend, I commend you guys so much, man. And this book, I, you know, you and I had a little pre-brief. I've been volunteering for years with different organizations. And I'm telling everybody out there right now, if you were prior service, you're prior anything, you're in the federal government, you're not, you're corporate, you're whatever, volunteer with these organizations to help veterans. They don't know how to do the resume. They do, they don't, but they need help. There's no book like this. Uh, the book coming out is the Veterans Workbook, How to Transition Out of the Military and, what is it, Get Hired. I love it. There it is. Uh, Kevin's holding up the book, the Veterans Workbook. I love it, man. We need books like this. There's no guide. There's nothing. You have a – you they, they give you a few different pamphlets here and there, and there's some books. You could learn how to do resumes online and cover letters, but specifically for the veteran community. I, you know, I'm constantly uh, either trying to get promoted, work on different jobs, working on my next, my trans, I'm working on my transition out of the Fed now, Googling how to do cover letters, how to do this and how to transition. There's nothing there. I'm, I really want to read this book, brother. Yeah. Even me and I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. 
And I, I think, you know, also when you get to a point where you've, you've done well, I think mentoring is huge. Um, I have a very close friend of mine who, you know, I met along the process um, and we've actually partnered, you know, started a couple of businesses together. He was very, very successful. He was in the Navy, got out, you know, did his time uh, selling medical devices and started his own you know, spine hardware company and, and did very, very successful. He was very, very successful with it. Um, but he's a great mentor. And I feel that the other component that helped me along the way is you don't have to feel like you go it alone. Um, and I think that's a challenge to all veterans that have done well and been successful getting out of the military is there's a lot of people and there will continue to be people who get out behind you that are going to need that assistance, some more than others. But you have a wealth of experience, not only your time in the teams or whatever you do, um, but also out on the business side. And, and sometimes it's answering a phone call or it's, hey, let me let me look that over for you. Let me, let me take a look at that. Or, hey, this is how I navigated through the VA. And that can really cut down on that time and frustration where some person may say, I'm done. I'm not going to go any further had they known you and had they gotten some advice and some mentorship, you know, their chances of success are much greater. So being a mentor is a huge, huge component because it's not all about you. It's, you know, how can you take your talents and your skills and your success and really translate that down to people? And I think that shows character and the type of person you are. Yeah. And you know, it's tough uh, to sell yourself, especially a lot of uh, former uh, military service members really don't like selling themselves. You do have introverts, you do have extroverts and stuff, but selling yourself and then on top of that, networking. A lot of the corporate world, a lot of this, the government world, a lot of everything is networking. You really do need to network and you need to sell yourself and be authentic about it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, um, I found it, you know, on social media, I've really, you know, turned, tuned that down quite a bit because I feel like my productivity goes down the more time I spend scrolling on social media, but, but definitely come check out this podcast. Um, but, but, <laughs> but seriously though, I think, you know, the more time you spend, um, you're seeking out, I've sp spoken to a lot of companies when it comes to veterans hire, they put on workshops, they put on meet and greets. I know there's a, a, a bunch of, you know, former veterans out there that do these meet and greets for vets and team them up with corporate America, but that's how you engage. You have to be face to face and they want to meet you in their element, in your element, and, and understand what makes you tick. And you have to sell yourself. I know um, somebody said to me about the last Punisher, like, you know, well, well, did you check with X, Y, and Z people before you, you know, release this? And they weren't talking about the DOD. And I was like, I'll tell you what, you know, if I had, if I had, if I'd worried about what everybody would say about my book, then, you know, nothing would get accomplished. I'm like, you have to, you have to go ahead and branch off because I don't know about you, but uh, you know, the SEAL teams don't pay me anymore. Um, you know, it comes down to my merit and what I'm able to provide for my family. So you have to be a proponent. You have to be a self-starter. You have to self-promote within limits. You know, obviously humility is key, um, but you have to go ahead and put you and your family interests first um, in order to, to reach that point of success. Yeah, and take a look at LinkedIn when it comes to networking. Find If you're going into the corporate world and you want to go into a specific sector, uh, take a look at it. Maybe you could reach out to someone and say, I'm looking to get over here. Can you give me some advice? Um, and then always when it comes to resumes and networking, everything, tailor make your resume for the job that you're applying to. Don't just blanket resume these resume, these things and just shoot them out there. Correct. Yeah. And the resumes have to be short and to the point. I've seen some resumes that are like you know, nine, 10 pages long. It's like writing a, a cohesive sent, uh, paragraph, you know, have your topic sentence, you know, get your main theme down there and then support it with a couple of small details and move on. Um, I have people that give me their whole life story and nobody wants to count care. Nobody cares about how many uh, rounds of ammunition you counted in 19, you know, 92 at whatever command, you know, get down to the details of what you actually do. Give me some supporting detail and make it short, and concise. Cause I, when I look at a resume, I'm going to spend probably about 30, 40 seconds on it and then I'm going to move on. And you have to capture that reader, uh, you know, very, very quickly and give them the details and the breakdown of what you're made of immediately. Well, all I know is this book is much needed. It's coming out soon, and we're going to be blasting it everywhere. The Veterans Workbook, How to Transition Out of the Military and Get Hired. It's your workbook. You got to get hired. And that's what I love about this. You, you, man, when I read that you had a book like this coming out, I'm like, this, I'm going to recommend this to everybody. Um, I'm going to read it myself. And I'm also going to recommend it to, you know, like I said, I work with Hire Heroes USA for years now, American Corporate Partners, and there's nothing like this out there. Um, Kevin, I really appreciate you coming on and talking about it, brother. Jason, I appreciate you, man. And, you know, I'm not going to bludgeon the TAPS program. I think it serves a purpose. It's yeah. very utilitarian, very greatest good for the greatest number. But I think there's something that needs to be done that, you know, further carries you on. And the workbook systematically goes through 
and transitioning out, applying for school, you know, navigating through the VA, um, transitioning to the workforce and what people want to hear. Um, it's not, it's not going to be, you know, pad your bottom and make you feel all good. There's going to be some tough love in the book. And I think that's what we all need. Heck, you know, if you were able to survive that in the military, then you know, reading a book and applying that in your civilian side as an individual, I think it's going to make you quite successful because you have the tools, you have the tools from the military. You know, they've always been there. You've brought them out and, you know, now it's time to showcase it to the rest of the world and the corporate world. Absolutely, brother.